You have just dialed in live to the center of the grilling universe. That's right, it's red hot and ready. Today it's old fashioned Texas barbecue. We got smoked grilled barbecue beef brisket. We got black eyed peas, a lamb chili. We got all sorts of rubs and things that are gonna make your world complete. And hey, Pimp Daddies, don't even think about trashing that sweet, sweet ride. Because today I'm going to show you how to make a barbecue out of those nasty hubcaps. So while you're rolling on down the road, make sure you take the Wilmington cut off. Yes, that's the Wilmington cut off because Billy Bob's Smoke Joe Shack is happening today. To the grill. Ah! Ooh, woo, woo, woo. We're back, we're back, and we're rubbing our meat. We're rubbing our briskets. What's a brisket? You want to know what a brisket is? I'll tell you what a brisket is because I know what a brisket is. A brisket comes from here, comes from here on the cow, the cow, the cow, that's the animal that makes milk. But in this case, it's making us some brisket, okay? So we're doing the brisket up. What we want to do is we want to tenderize this mother, and we're going to turn it over here like this. Can you leave a spank? Spank, spank. You don't want to be spanking your meat on TV, do you? You want to take up the Buford T. Pusser and whack that butter. Bam! Yeah! 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 Okay, now we've got that happening. We've got to make our little bit of a beef, beef, beef rub, okay? Moving over here, we got some brown sugar. Sugar. We got some of this here uh, onion salt. Yeah, that's it. Paprika. And lots of the chili, right? We got lots of the chili. Chili's going to the rub, the rub's going to the chili. Chili's going to the beef. And we got some of our, this here is our uh, oregano. That's it. And we got some of our garlic, garlic powder. And cumin. Mix it all up. We're rubbing it down. There we go. Mm. Woo! Get that rub in there. That's ready for the fire. What do we have with beef brisket now? We have guacamole. Okay, what that is. Guaca means, means guaca. And mole means mole, okay? Gonna slice in our avocados. Yeah. Get in my face, mole. Now, you want some of that, huh? Okay. Okay, we're slicing these babies up. Gonna squeeze them into the, to here. Cause we're gonna mush them up later on anyway. Straight into the bowl. Another two, right on in there. There we go. Don't get any on you here. Get that in there. Yeah. So you know what we need to do? We need to be adding some of our lime juice. Lime juice prevents this from going gray. We don't want gray. Got a little bit of the cilantro. This comes from the Mexican chaps south of the border. The guys are always, uh, shh, never mind. They come to the barbecue, you know what I mean? Into the drink. We got some onion, straight in the bowl. Chili pepper, into the bowl. A little bit of tomato, into the bowl. Then you toss ever so gently. Ever so gently, like you're rocking in your sweet mommy's arms. Rocking, rocking, we're rocking, we're rocking, we're rocking like when the sweet mommy's arms. We're rocking in mommy's arms. We can take it to the grill. Take it straight to the grill. Right to the grill. Can I get a witness on the grill? Give me a grill mark, please! Praise the grill! You may have noticed that the barbecue that John uses is pretty high tech, but it's really important to remember that a barbecue is a really simple device. In fact, all you need is a fire retardant space, a little bit of fire, and your favorite grilling food. You could probably make a barbecue out of the crap you've got laying around at home. And today we're doing just that. We've got a couple of boys in the backyard digging through our junk and making us a barbecue. So stick around, because you just might learn something. And we're back. And what are we doing? We're making smoky baked beans, okay? We're going to start off with a little bit of cannellini beans. These are an Italian bean, but they are grown right here in North America, processed by the good folks at the Cannellini Bean Company. 
Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some bacon lardons. That's right, lardons, not, you know, lardons, okay? Turn this up into the pan. Gotta get a little heat on them. Call them sauteing. We're sauteing these up. Right. A little bit of oil helps them dance a little bit better. Hopping out of the pop, these things want to do. Along from there, grabbing the onion. One large onion and very fine dice, right into the pot, okay? Once we got this going, we gotta let this sit and saute for a few minutes, okay? Get the flavors out of the onions, get the flavors out of the bacon, out of the bacon and out of the onions, okay? You got that? Bacon and onions, getting the flavor out. Moving over here. We're gonna make a muffin sauce for our beef brisket that we already seasoned up outside. And what a muffin sauce is, it is something that is going to enable our beef brisket to stay nice, moist, and tender on the barbecue. It's not a true barbecue sauce, but what it is, it's a muffin sauce. A muffin sauce makes it moist, right? I already told you that though, so now you know. Okay, let's move it over here. Got a little bit of sugar for the sweet, okay? This is gonna make a nice caramelized exterior on our piece of meat, okay? Moving along, we got some, ooh, that's garlic. Got lots of garlic in there. Got some chili pepper, straight in. There used to be chili peppers here, but there are not anymore. They're in the bowl, right over here. You're looking in the wrong place, boy. Look in the bowl. Okay, we got some coarse salt, okay? Not too much, because we don't want to dry it out too much. We just, just want to season the meat. We want to season it. Not dry it out, but season it, okay? We got a cup and a half of vinegar, white vinegar. And we got some beer. Oh, one cup of beer. That's a little less than a beer, so you can have a few sips for yourself while you're making this. That's all right, isn't it? Have a little beer with a little bit. A little bit, that's right. Okay, this is all ready to go. Moving back over here to our pot, it looks as though we can start adding the rest of our ingredients here. These don't have to be brown, they just have to be tender. They have to be tender, flavorful, but not brown, okay? If you want a brown, you can have a brown. This have to be tender and flavorful, though. There we go. Ooh, this is nice. Maple syrup right in here. Comes from maple trees. Ooh, cider vinegar, that's great. That comes from cider. And black strap molasses, just so we don't want this sticking to our ribs. This is the kind of meal that you want to have, and they aren't going to say, that's stuck to my ribs. <coughs> okay, that's what we're doing, making sick of the rib beans. And this here, ladies and gentlemen, take a look there. This is liquid smoke. This is the extract from a smoker that's been scraped off and distilled somehow that they're not telling us, but we know it works. So we're dumping it in there. We've got about a teaspoon of liquid smoke. This stuff is very, very powerful. You don't want to put too much in, otherwise you can have too much smoke. You have so much smoke, you won't know what to do with your smoke. So just a little bit, because we don't want too much smoke. We got that smoke in there, and now it's going. Quarter cup of brown sugar. And we got about three teaspoons, pardon me, tablespoons of dried mustard. That gives a little bit of heat too, that's good. It gives that nice mustardy heat. And we got some ketchup. Three tablespoons of ketchup as well. That's gonna give us that little bit of the barbecue sort of flavor, like what you get in a barbecue sauce. But we're not making a sauce, we're making beans here. Mm -mm -mm. Don't talk to me. Is it done yet? Right, okay. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce, right in there. Now we're gonna give it all a little bit of stir around. Mmm. You wanna get in there and check this out, cause this smells so good. God, I tell you, there's pigs sitting on the fence waiting for some of this right now. Hmm. <coughs> you look in there, boy. What are you looking at me for? Nice guy, a little bit tight. <gasps> That's right. Now we got the beans. We're gonna dump the beans inside. And these are pre-cooked beans. What you don't wanna do with pre-cooked beans is cook them too much, because pre-cooked beans are just a little too much on their own. Let this simmer for a few minutes. We're gonna go outside, fire up the barbecue, get smoking our brisket, and when we come back, we're gonna be putting on our bibs, licking our fingers, and getting ready for a nice old feed. Texas style. It's all about finding your inner caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. All right, we're ready to go back in time and have these boys use their primal instincts. Let's build a barbecue. We can sure build a barbecue out of anything. Um, take a look around, we got plenty of parts here. So let's get to it. Alan, let's see uh, what we can do here. Let's make a barbecue out of this stuff. Copper pipes here. Absolutely, we could always hammer these in the ground. Use a hubcap for the base. Okay, Alan, do you wanna give that a couple taps? Perfect. Oh, is that good? Yep, Excellent. just enough to hold it in the ground. All right. And uh, let's do one drive in there. Let's we want try. To move it into a triangle. Let's try another one about here someplace. All right. Whoop. Wrong nail. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not good with hammers, apparently. And let's try another one right about here someplace. 
Across North America, people love grilling raw flesh. There are barbecue teams and events all over the place. It's a huge deal. Let's get some string. Do you to cut this with Al? Uh, sure do. In Argentina, barbecuing is a little different. Men build barbecues as a family thing. And in Argentina, barbecues are called perisha. They're held on traditional family estates in open-air buildings called quinta. We'll tie these two first. Oh. Are all going, how far down are we going here? That should probably do it right about there. Excellent. I will try tying this up in some form to keep it together. And a special string? This is uh, official barbecue string. You have to use this stuff or it just will fall down every time. Sure, I'm sure they believe in that too. <laughs> this looks an awful lot like a uh, normal string to me. <laughs> we'll find out if it doesn't stay up. <laughs> the old double knot or some sort of knot. Are we ready for the hubcap? I think <laughs> it looks like this needs some adjusting. There, Probably. try that. All right, all right. This is the one we pick. And we'll just put it in there like so. Oh, that's a beaut. Perfectly horizontal. Perfectly oh, yeah. horizontal. Yeah, great job. <laughs> <laughs> taking your trash to the dump boys, we're taking recycling to a whole new level. Spark it up, boys. Woo, burn, baby, burn. <laughs> oh, guys, doesn't this kind of remind you of the Olympic torch? Only crappy. Yeah. <laughs> You know, there are a lot of stories about the origin of barbecuing out there, and my favorite one comes from Guana. Supposedly, the ancient tribe used to cheerfully spit roast their enemies. How do you like that one? I don't think we're gonna be getting into that today, but we'll see what happens, because I might have to throw John on the grill. <gasps> Okay, boys, we're back. What did we promise you? We promised you barbecue. We're gonna give you some barbecue right now. Barbecue beef brisket with our beautiful rub. Okay, popping it open. We put some smoking chips in there a little while ago. This will burn a little bit, but I'm sure the lack of oxygen once we put this baby on is gonna put them right out, okay? There's our brisket. Now we hit it with a little bit of our beer mopping sauce, okay? Just to start it off. Oh yeah, that's good. Got beer in it. <coughs> okay, moving right along, what we're gonna do is to make some very spicy chili. How spicy is it? Come on here, I'll tell you how spicy it is. It's very spicy. Okay, turn up the heat on a pot here. We got some lamb. We got leg, lamb, lamb, leg. That's right, we got leg of the lamb. Very lean, very lean, very tender. Doesn't need to cook very long, but we need to put it on very high heat, very high heat so it goes brown. You put it on low heat, it's gonna steam, it's gonna be all gray. Great, kinda like your mother. <laughs> A little bit of oil. And be very careful, because this has a tendency of spitting back at you. If you have too much, you can do it in batches, but I think we're just fine here. A little rock salt. I'm just going to toss this around a bit. We don't want to overwork this, because what will happen is it won't caramelize, and that's where you get all the flavors. When your meat gets brown, it's caramelizing. From there, you can add a little bit of onion. That's gonna saute along with this mess. And some garlic, right in the pot. We got a couple of kinds of chili peppers we're gonna put in here. This is a pasilla chili pepper. This is from Mexico. New Mexico, Texas a little bit, but this is lovely. Get a smell of that. Oh, lovely. Okay, rip this up, put it straight in because everything goes in bigger in Texas, doesn't it now? Ancho pepper. Ancho pepper, very hot, very earthy, very smoky. And this is going straight in too, right like that. Bingo. 
Okay, did that not go in? Robert, where's my chili at? While they're picking up the chilies, I'm going to put in some chipotle chili pepper. This is a puree of chipotle pillies. Pili chipotles, that's right, chipotle pillies, chili peppers. And what this is, it's a smoked jalapeno pepper over jalapeno wood. So they smoked it with the jalapeno. They smoked the jalapeno with the jalapeno wood, okay? Okay, I'm telling this thing here, it blew a hole right through my house. You I gotta be careful, I told your kids stay away from my house. Last time you were in Mohammed, what might happen to my dog? Stay out of my yard. Straight in. That comment about the dog never happened. It was his cat. Now we just stir this up a little bit. That's coming along nicely. Getting some nice brown color there. I'm stirring with the, with the brush because that's what we do in Texas. Ask any Texan, they stir with a brush. <laughs> to that now we add some tomatoes. Get your hand right in there, squeeze them because there's some nice hot tomatoes. Think about squeezing, oh, something you shouldn't be. Then put it right back in the pot. Once you put the lid on it, no one will find out about it. Three cups of canned black-eyed peas. You find these all over the South. Usually they start out white-eyed, they make a couple comments, then they black-eyed, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> some cumin. The Arabs use cumin. That's all right, because we stole it from them, and they ain't going to get it back. Coarse salt. Once again, the brush for stirring. A stirring brush. You stir that around. You say the magic words. The magic words, where the hell's the lid to my pot? Before we got to do this, we got to do this. And what that is, is two cups of chicken stock and a cup of beer. Give that a stir around with a Texas chili stirring brush. Put the lid on. That'd be just fine. Ready in five minutes. Okay, y'all, we're back. We're gonna check on our brisket. This be our brisket that's flaming up nice here. Wanna keep that away. That's what we call a flare up in the barbecue world here. Some of the fat from the cap there that we left on there has been draining off into the fire here. But it's, it's okay, it's okay, it's not burnt. You can ask for our mopping sauce here. This baby's just about done. This has been on here for at least four hours. And, oh man, if you could smell this, You'd be taking your pants off, going for a swim, calling me mom, and heading over for dinner. <laughs> okay, we'll close that down just for a minute. Another five, ten minutes on that, that should be just fine. We'll take our, authentic, our authentic. You seen in here first, the authentic Texan Red Hot and Ready stirring brush, available for $19.9 at www.redhotandready.tv. Our authentic chili stirring brush and this has got about another five minutes left in it that's gonna be fine this lamb looks good you can smell it Woo -wee. and she is hot okay what do we need with this dinner i think what we need is some good old-fashioned bread for our chili and i think what we're going to make is a mexican tortilla authentic mexican tortillas no but close enough for us because we don't care we got ourselves about three cups of flour half a cup of vegetable shortening and I'm gonna mash that all together with a little bit of salt. Because seasoning is the true element of making food taste good. A little bit more salt there. You wanna mash this up until it's nice and flaky. And once you believe you got all your animal fat, your shortening that is, or your lard, once you believe you got all that incorporated, you add your water very slowly. And keep mashing, because we don't want to make too many lumps here. A little bit. And a little bit more. Okay, we're getting this nice and combined. Actually, the texture of this reminds me of something that happened once when I was in gym class, and I, I had to go to the bathroom real bad. just didn't know quite how bad it had to go. So on the high diving board, I jumped into the water. When I came out, there was a whole different matter in my pants. <laughs> Wish it was a couple of tortillas, but it wasn't. Okay, this is just about there. At this point, I'm going to knead it. 
I'm going to knead it just the way you need me to show you how to knead it. There we are. Why don't you do this for a few more minutes, but seeing as I have the attention span of a gnat, I'm going to put this underneath the table and provide you with four balls of tortilla pastry. I'm going to roll them out with a little bit of flour. I'm going to roll them out to about approximately 12 inch diameter and maybe an eighth of an inch thick, because they're going to cook up nice and fast and barbecue for you. This is the last thing you want to do in your barbecue. You take them off nice and hot, you wrap your meat up in it. Or you can wrap whatever else you like. I mean, you can wrap your friend's meat in it. You can wrap your mother's meat in it. It just doesn't matter as long as you wrap something in it, okay? Make a little disc. Add a little flour to your magic rolling pin here, your Texas-style rolling pin. Spin it around. A little more rolling, making sure not to double it over, because a doubled over tortilla is a doubled over tortilla. And that's what we call them around here. Okay, I could similarly roll it the other three. Once again, I have a very short attention span. So I have some pre-prepared tortillas here. What you want to do now is you want to add a little oil. This is Texas cow oil. Tune back in next week where we'll teach you to hunt a cow live. All you need is a ball peen hammer and a good pair of shoes. <laughs> Wee. Don't ask. Straight onto the grill. Voila. While this is cooking up, I'm going to run inside very quickly because I'm going to need to turn this in about 25 seconds. I'm going to grab my smoky baked beans and we'll come back with dinner, y'all. You can all come back now, you hear? I'm smelling something funky. John must be heading over with those beans. You know that, darling? We got our smoky baked beans right here. John, what's with the accent? You sound stupid. Uh-huh. He's red hot and redneck today. That's right, and we got some redneck chili going on here, darling. It smells great. Oh, uh, redneck chili, black eyed peas and lamb. Look at that. Stick your mitts in there. That's right, and barbecue lovers and chili lovers share that same great passion for that smoky taste. That's because we're red hot and ready. The home of smoky good eats. Woo!